Hi, welcome to ADI Technical Training. I'm Matthew. Today I'm in our technical lab at our UK hub in Chatterton, Manchester. Okay, let's get started. In this video, we're going to set up a one way Hike Vision IP video intercom. It's one door station calling two handsets simultaneously. To set the system up, you're going to need two pieces of software. You'll need the SADP software from the Hike Vision website and also IVMS 4200. If you're not familiar with IVMS or SADP, click on the link above, it will show you how to get started with SADP. In this video, I'm going to show you the setup using IVMS 4200. So click on the icon on your desktop and that will load the, uh, load the IVMS software up. If it's the first time you've used it, it's going to ask you for a username and password. So here we are in maintenance and management and what we have to do is click on online devices assuming you plugged into the same switch as your um, devices and we can find what we've got. So first thing I've got here is the handset. So we're going to add that to the client. So click add that and let's give it a name. Let's just call it handset because that's what it is. I'm just setting up the first handset in this instance. Um, username would be admin and the password would be the password you created in SADP. Um, synchronize the time and add that. And that's the handset added to um, IVMS. Now let's add the door station. Give it a descriptive name, door. Its IP address is okay. You can see there, synchronize time, you can see the username is already populated. It was admin and the password is the password you created in SADP. Okay, they're both added and showing as online. So what we can do now is use a scroll bar here and you can see you've got the at the end there where it says operation, you've got the cog. So if you click on that cog, it will take you to the configuration window. So let's go to the door station first of all and go to device management. And what we're going to do here is add the handset to the door station. So this is the password you created in SADP. The registration, hopefully, as I would mentioned, set all your passwords the same. So this is also the registration password you created. Serial number, if you click back into IVMS, and at the bottom there, you can find the handset. This one here. You'll see the serial number there. That's the serial number that you, you need to input into um, into the device, into the registration. So serial number, type that in. Okay, next the IP address of the door station, uh, sorry, of the handsets, which would be 21 in this case. Double check. Yep, 21. And that's just my instance, it could be whatever instance you've set yours up in SADP, but there's no harm in copying what I've done here. Your sub neck mask, this should be fairly generic 255.255.255.0. If um, if it doesn't show up in um, IVMS, it will show up in SADP, or you could ask your client if it's going on the, on the network. Same with the gateway, you'll find that in SADP. Then it's floor one, room one. Save that. And that's now succeeded, that's saved. You'll see it's offline, but don't worry about that. Click on intercom, session settings, and you need to type in your password that you created in SADP. Hopefully, they're all the same. Just type in your password, click save. Save succeeded. So now we've set up the door station to look for the handset. So now we need to go to the handset. Configuration again. Wait for it to load. This time we're going to go to network and then group network settings, password, when you set in SADP. And in the main door station, what's the IP address of the door station that's calling this handset? Um, 192.168. So type in the IP address 
of the door station, which is 2-2. Two, two. Save that. I'm sure it's 2-2. Two, two. Let's have a quick check. So that's saved. Close that window. Yeah, at the bottom there it was 2-2. Two, two. So there, those two are now connected. And if we just want to check it's working, let's go back to configuration of the door station. And if we go to um, device management, and now this time, just move this window across here. And now this time you can see there, we've got the green tick, which indicates the door station is now com communicating with a handset. So one door station to call one handset, that's all set up now and we're ready to go. Next, we need to enroll some fobs into the system. I'll be enrolling the fobs in two ways. I'll enroll them in using the Hikvision desktop reader, and I'll also enroll them in using the reader on board. There's two separate ways of doing it. If it's for commercial application, you're adding lots of fobs on a daily basis or weekly basis, it's best to use the enrollment reader. And if it's just one door, maybe domestic application, you can just do it through the um, reader on board the intercom. How to add tokens to the uh, to the reader to the MyFi reader or proximity reader. The um, the important thing to do is make sure you give these a, a descriptive name. In, the, in our example, it's only one door calling several handsets. But if you have a larger site, it becomes a bit more important to know which is the panel that you're going to be using um, to enroll tokens in if you're doing it that way. So maybe call it front door or gate or side door, just so you know where that is. Um, I've called it my fair intercom because it's the in I have several intercoms here, um, but this is the intercom with the built-in my fair reader. So let's go and add a person first of all. So it's squares at the top. Go to person. The organization you can change it. It says new organization. I've previously changed it to ADI. Just click on edit and give it the name that suits ADI for my case. Um, let's add a token. Token one, person one. Uh, the name we'll call them Fob. Uh, this information is not that important unless it's a unless personnel want it. It's a male or female email or telephone number makes no difference really. And then if we scroll down, we come to the credentials, the card, or Fob. How are we going to read this person into the system? If you click on settings. You can see there's two ways of doing it. There's card reader, that's where you use the, the local intercom panel, or this desktop reader. In the first example, I'll use the desktop reader. So you can see that's the correct reader. Click OK. And now we need to get our fob. I'll be using the fob. Uh, click read. The reader's ready. Present the token populates with the, the card number, the token number, add that to uh, the, the to the file. And then if we scroll to the bottom here, resident information, let's click on that. Uh, the bind device is an analog door station. And this is where it becomes important that you gave it a name, um, my fair intercom. As I say, if you have five or six doors on, on site and only one has the, the my fair reader on it, makes it easier to find or if it's the reader that's closest to the door that you're working it makes it easier to find so anyway my phone to come um, room one floor one room one and add them to the um, to the database let's add another this time um, i'll use the yellow fob and i'll just scroll down here to credential and add a card but this time i'm going to add them through the reader itself through the card reader and the device i'll be using is the myfair intercom okay to that and now if i click read and present a fob to it get a reassurance tone from the intercom and there's a card number that's added now so let's add them to the system as well, database, scroll down, 
find device, unlock door station again. My friends come. Uh, four one room one. Add. And now we have two cards added to the system. So you'd think that would mean the reader works. Well, not not quite. If you look at the bottom here, for example, if I present a token to the reader, you can see there we, it's an invalid card. It's not recognized by the system. What we have to do is go and create a time zone or an access level to let people through. So let's click here, access control. Now, first things here is holidays. Do we need to create a holiday? Well, not in my example, no. But if you did, this is where you would create a time zone. And this would be the template you would use. What we need to do is go to authorization and access group. And what an access group is, is it's, it allows people through certain doors at a certain time. So let's add a uh, person, I'm gonna call it door because we've only got the one door. And this is what I was saying about time templates. When are these people allowed through? Well, if you remember, we have an all day access. That's what this one is. So that lets you through Monday through to Sunday, 24 hours. If we had another group, maybe, you know, 24, uh, sorry, maybe Monday to Friday, you would call that daytime, uh, weekdays. And if it's only the weekend, maybe weekend. But I've only got the two, which is authorized. Next is users. If you remember, the organization was ADI and it's all the users in there. We need to enable them. They're all enabled. Which door are they allowed through? The MIFA door, the MIFA intercom. And now we just save that. So still, we now have cards added to the system. We have access zones added to the system. All we have to do now is select the door and send that information through to the de to the device. So let's apply that. And that's going to apply the rules. And in the result there, you can see it's all applied. So now if I get one of my tokens, yellow, I think it was, and present to the reader. And if you hear in the background there, that's a valid read. Again, if you look at the bottom, um, and I present a token, you get the confirmation message within IVMS. And there you go, the, the short way on adding tokens to the Higvision Generation 2 MyFair Reader. Thanks very much for watching. All the products mentioned in this training video can be found on our website. Links are below. Don't forget to subscribe. Thanks very much.